Hi, welcome to Craft for Creatives. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your first craft document. We're going to make a stunning portfolio that you can use to share your creative practice and your work with your clients. Craft is a perfect tool for creatives, mainly because it's built by creatives. By focusing on simplicity, Craft allows you to make rich, detailed documents for yourself, your clients, and your audience. Craft helps you communicate your entire creative process, from its conception to delivery. Today we're going to start right at the beginning, cover how to set up a workspace and build a beautiful portfolio to help you showcase your work. When you first open your craft account, you will automatically have a personal space created for you. This is a great place to keep your documents for your home use, like travel plans, recipes, and general information. I'd recommend instantly making a separate space for your work. To do this, tap on your space icon in the top left, and then hit New Space. Here you're given the option to create a new space that is stored in Craft, or one that's stored externally. You can learn more about these options in the linked video here. For now, just tap Create New Space, then type a name. I'll use Design Home Space for this, as we'll keep this space for everything relevant to our creative work. Pro tip, if you click the three dot icon next to a space, you can choose to pin your space to the sidebar. This makes it super easy to switch between spaces, which is especially helpful as you add more spaces. When you open your space, you'll be met with two onboarding documents in your All Documents folder. On the left-hand side, you'll see the organization tools that come as default. From all of your documents to those that you've favorited, saved as templates, and shared content. Underneath that is the folders section. The two onboarding documents are stored here for now. In a later video, we'll talk about general space organization and cover ways of structuring your work but for now we'll get back to all documents. You'll find a plus symbol in the top right of your screen or on the bottom bar of your iPhone. By clicking on that, you'll create a new document. Let me just run through the tools we're looking at on the screen. At the top, you have your page title and here along the right hand side is your toolbar. You've got the insert tool, which allows you to drop in anything from a text box to a code block. Underneath, you have the style panel. This allows you to change the formatting within the current text block, either as you're writing or afterwards. The real power in craft lies in the slash command, where you can access pretty much any styling option found in the toolbar by tapping the slash and searching for whatever you need. The page style allows you to set global styles for your documents, including setting cover images, backgrounds, and default fonts. This is where you can get really creative and make documents clients will love. Underneath this, you have page info, which shows you all the background info in your document. If you're on a pro plan or above, you also get stats on the word count, characters, blocks, and reading time. Before we do anything else, I want you to click on the drop down under spelling, and then choose your language. This will automatically turn on the spelling tool for all your documents. You can change the default spelling language in your settings, or choose a specific language for each document. Lastly is the actions menu. Here's where you'll find a whole bunch of tools that are really useful for any document. Try learning a few keyboard shortcuts to really speed up your workflow. Okay, let's get started. This is gonna be a designer portfolio for Laura Simmons. We'll start with the title. Most great portfolios have a quick mission statement about the creative. I'm gonna to go to the style panel and select title to make this stand out. Maybe all black's a little dull. Let's highlight this mission statement. I'm gonna select this section, go to the highlight button in the menu it appears, and now I can pick a color or a gradient. Next, we're gonna want a call to action to get in touch with Laura. Keeping this right at the top is gonna to make sure lots of people know exactly how to get in touch. We'll keep the same text style and just add an arrow to make sure people know this is clickable. Now let's highlight that too, but a different gradient to the last. By selecting the text and clicking the link button, you can add the following text to automatically open a viewer's mail client. One of the great things about Craft is you can set a cover image to really bring your documents to life. Go to the Page Styles menu and toggle on Cover Image. Now you can click the Cover Image box and select Insert File. I'll upload an asset that was previously made. Now we look like we're really getting somewhere. I'm going to add a nice friendly introduction. First I'm going to add a separator by going to the Insert menu and dragging this light separator into my dock. To make a title for this section, I'm going to choose Heading in the Style menu. As you can see, when I go to the next line in Craft, it automatically returns my text to its default body state. Now for a couple of sentences to introduce Laura. 
I think that for any large block of text, we should be emphasizing some of the key messaging in our portfolio. So I'm going to select this and select bold from the pop-up menu that appears. After this, I want a bit more detailed information about Laura, so let's make another heading. This time, to get the heading text, I'm going to hit Control and 3. If I now try pressing Control 2 or Control and 1, I can change the style of the entire block without having to highlight anything. Let's add all of Laura's info. This block of text is a bit too long for portfolio. Luckily, Craft allows you to group text when it becomes too long. While this looks neater, we can make it look even more outstanding by going to the Style menu and selecting a card. Now we can go into the card and treat it like a normal page, so let's add a cover image. Back in the main document, the card updates to show that cover image too. Next, we're going to talk about Laura's design process, so I'll add another separator. I want to show you another way to do this that can save you some time. By hitting the slash key, you'll bring up a quick menu. Here, you can either search for what you want or just start typing. It works by associated words, so either you can type S, E, P, or L, I, N to get the separators up. We'll add a heading again, and now another section of text with some keywords in bold. Now we have a list of content and subcontent that I want to organize into a hierarchy. First, I'll make the titles bold, and then I'll indent the paragraph by hitting the tab key. I'll try a bullet list by selecting all the text, going to the style panel, and selecting bullet. It's better, but it's another really long block of content. Let's try a toggle list. I can just select the titles by clicking on the first, and then command and clicking on the other titles. Now I can hit slash and type T O. G, G. Okay, let's just clean this up and highlight the keywords again. What's a portfolio without projects? Well, not a portfolio, I guess, so let's add some. As this is a really important section of the portfolio, I'm going to justify the title in the center and use Control 1 to make it a proper title. Let's add a little subtitle under there too. I know I'm going to add two case studies for Laura's creative work and I'll put them in cards, so let's make those first. On a new line, you can either go to the style menu, slash menu and type card, or hit Command, Shift and L to turn the empty block into a card. Let's click into it and start working here. This is going to be for an app called Show Tracker, so we'll add a title and a cover image. By now we should be pretty used to using different styles for text, so I'll breeze through these. Now we're going to be adding some images for early design concepts. As with most things in Craft, you can do this via the menu by going Insert and then File and selecting your image. You can also drag and drop an image from your device or a website, Word document, pretty much anything. Let's finish this off with a few more images and highlighting our key results. I'm going to do the exact same for another case study. So I'll select this card, hit Command and D to duplicate it, and then go in and edit all of the content. Now I'm going to show some additional projects to highlight more of Laura's work. I'll make this a subtitle as it's part of the highlighted projects section using Control and 2. And just write this on the fly, adding bold sections as I go with Command and B. A new heading for this project here, and I'm going to drag and drop this animated GIF here. You can easily use an image or even a video, but the GIF will automatically play on repeat, which is a nice touch. If I drag and select these three blocks, I can then hit Command and D, which duplicates them in order below the last selected block. Now I can just change the content to match a new project and do the same again for a third project. Now we're going to finish up in the same way we started, by adding lots of ways to contact Laura so all her new potential clients can book her. You should be pros at adding separators by now. We sent her some text again to make this section stand out. Add a title, control one, and now a sentence. Let's go in and highlight that last part. Now another mail to link for drop me an email, and let's link to an external booking link for this. Finally, we'll drop in some social media links by pasting them straight in here. We can even adjust these to make them look a little nicer and fit better on the page. Of course, with a portfolio, the most exciting part is sharing it. At Craft, we've made sharing incredibly easy. In the top right corner of your window is the Share panel. If you click on it, you have Share, 
Export as and transfer options. Export as and transfer are ways to move your craft docs into other apps or media, but the real magic happens in the share page. By clicking create, you make a secret link, which allows you to share a view only version of the document with whoever you want. You can add a password, expiration date, and other options. Once it's shared, you can keep an eye on how many views your portfolio is getting. One of the best parts of shared documents is that they update in real time. So you can update your portfolio whenever you want and it will change for everyone that you sent it to. Looks great, but let's make it look even better by adding a background. Back in Craft, I'm going to open Page Style and under Background, add a gradient. There are some presets along the top, but I already have an idea for what I'd like to do. So I'll customize it myself here. Nice, and now it's updated in the shared link too. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at how Craft can bring the most boring documents to life with a CV makeover. Be sure to check that out along with the rest of our Craft for Creative series.